Hey, hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of our Filmmaking Production Diary. Uh, I'm your host, Miguel Ortega, and this is my co-host, Trama. Hello, everyone. So we're going to be documenting the making of our second uh, Unreal short film um, with a tiny team. This one, so we, we had finished one previously called The Voice in the Hollow. We actually weren't able to stream last week because we were in Cartagena for a film festival that had that film playing. So it was pretty cool. Um, yeah. What do you think about a trend? It was very cool. <laughs> it was very cool. Yeah. Oh. It was very cool. Um, we're glad to be back and uh, start working on this again. So project we're working on right now, we don't have a title. We're narrowing in on a title um but we don't want to rush it because then we're stuck with it so yeah so yeah so we're going to be showing the making of an entire animated film in unreal like i said we've already done it before um, we had pretty good success with it and this new one is about two best friends the the, the last one we did was very much about envy and this one i think is more about friendship yes so it's the so total opposite completely opposite that one's envy and rivalry um and this one is about two best friends called mayo and cop so the guy that's on the screen right now trans started working on him last week this is mayo so he's kind of pale and orangey and kind of mayo looking uh <laughs> and uh yeah, show us what you got, Tran, or do you want to tell us a little bit about this guy? Well, I um, I started blocking him out, la not last Friday, but the Friday 4th, so I did it on the stream, and then um, came back from Cartagena, and I worked on him a little bit. Um, we haven't been back that many days, so I didn't get a lot done. But um, these buttons here are just temporary, So, uh, but we, we do want like kind of square look so caught caught is like really round he's got a lot of round balls his head's a ball <laughs> do, do you have the, the the little clip or i should maybe i should play it real quick just in case uh let me see if i could find it uh da, 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 da. i could also probably try loading it i think i saved because um we're definitely going to use path tracer in this one which we we didn't have um available for us i i found it in in the last thing should i just show it because i have the you can show it although like the path tracer version is is a lot better looking yeah well in the meantime until you load it okay. so this is uh i can't see your screen you can see that right yeah i can see that so you can see this is caught and everything about him is round. Um, is a ball. <laughs> his head is literally a ball. His nose is a ball. His eyes are balls. His little ear things like Princess Leia are like balls. He's got balls on his head. He's just a round dude. And <laughs> Mayo, on the other hand. Is, is much more squarish. Um, right here. So his yeah. head is... Is more of a box more of a box and he's not all square everywhere but he's definitely not all round but even if you look at like his torso and then that little thingy he has a little skirt thing that almost feels like another box and then his feet feel like boxes and yeah he's much boxier it would be cool to make the tips of his feet feel fl uh flatter uh yeah i mean yeah. i haven't gotten his shoes in yet so because you see what i'm saying like make it feel more square like squarish at like the tips of his toes yeah kind of like how it looks like from that angle right there it just kind of looks flat i mean it could be i was thinking like more cute tennis shoes it, it could be but they could just be square in the front okay i mean i think that's fine um hold on let me just load this we still don't have two-sided lighting or shadows and let me just load the sequence real quick there you go 
Uh, let's see. Oh, so this is doesn't have the path tracer on. Um, and we did this one stream, and, and again, in our first project, the, or for short, we didn't have path tracer working because it was so early on. Um, but now we're, we're definitely going to have it, and it's really impressive. Um, it is much slower, so I just turned it on. Give it a second. Doesn't it blow it out a little bit? It makes it much brighter. This, so is, this is somebody actually even mentioning this on the stream last week, and we're like, yeah, let's see what it looks like, and it actually worked out really well. Yeah. You can see, like, there's this red bar right here. I don't know if it's... Yeah, you can see it. Yeah, that's, like, the rendering. So... It's just really fascinating. When I started looking at all the documentation, like some of the issues you can get, like fireflies and all these noise, that's the same kind of problems that we had v -ray. with V-Ray um, and all that stuff. But this is still really fast. We will probably have render times now, though, considering like if you go for this kind of look. But this, to me, looks so much better. Um, so wh why is the rocks... Why do they look like they're not textured? Is that just because they're brighter? These rocks? Yeah. They're just white rocks. But right now they have um, Nanite not quite working. I did find under the documentation, and I saved it. One second. Here. I should forget which document it was because I did write it down. Because we've been out of it for a week. Yeah, it does make me really, really. Actually, I can just pull it up. But there is a way to actually fix that. So when we were doing this, you can see the nanite. Let's just turn off path tracer. Go back to lit. Like focus on the little rocks. Like yeah, like this rock, this rock here. Like that's really round. And then when I shift to path tracing, you can see the nanite is not working. Um, but you can type something in the console. Let me just. Pull up the page. I believe it's this page here. And there was a command you could put in. Did you do any retopology before sending it to Substance? Uh, on the on the character, yeah. yes, not on the clothing. Here it is. So under the path tracing page. Let me just, uh, let me just I'll put this uh, up there so people even know what the hell I'm talking about. Uh, how did you do any retopology before sending it to Substance? So. Characters, yes. Uh, clothing is right out of um, Marvelous. Marvelous. Um, but the UVs were done in Marvelous. So, Lord Luigi Riggs, hand pink, waving high. Hello. Yeah, the cloth, the cloth is just Marvelous. Well, it depends. Like the stuff that's going to be simulated is just triangulated. And then um, some of the clothing was retopologized, and that's the clothing that's going to be rigged. So here under this command, um, ray tracing dot nanite dot mode one. And again, if you take a look right here and you can see some of the rocks, look at this one, it looks really mushy. And if we go back to lighting, you can see how everything it's got like, nice detail. Yeah. Uh, but what you can do on the path tracing, just find that command, enter it, and you can see that nanite is working. Oh, it's much better. It just seems like something you, you would want on by default. Um, I did save that somewhere, but I don't know where I pasted it. I wish you could create, and maybe you can, like there's a shelf editor where you could just put these commands to just press the button and it just runs it. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, mm -hmm. anyway, it kind of sucks to have all these like uh, commands you have to remember or save somewhere. But I do, I do really like how this looks. It looks really. It, the materials look so much better. Um, I can't tell if you can tell through the stream, but yeah, he looks much softer. It feels more cloth. 
Um, he's really noisy because I put subsurface scattering on his clothing. <laughs> so I don't know if I want to keep that. Um, I do think the character itself should have subsurface scattering, but um, maybe maybe the clothing having it is a little too much. So you can see it's it's got all these little sparkles going on in it because of that. Um, but I definitely can't just play it anymore because it, it does take time to render. And we've been talking about it, like maybe not every shot needs to have path tracing. I don't think it's a big deal. I think that if I just took the material and I just shut off um, SSS, it would just render faster. Yeah, but, but it looks nice. It does, but it it needed the SSS without the path tracing. Um, and it doesn't, because it looked really harsh, right? And the path tracer makes everything look really, really soft now, like what you want it to look like. So it really looks like, like V-Ray to me, which is just awesome. All right, you wanna go, you wanna pop up? Um, yeah, let me just. Yeah, it does look much better, huh? Well, he, he's really sharp and re a, lot, a lot harsher looking, less buttery. Um, but anyway, that's where we, we left off with that. And then again, this is where I'm in with the clothing. Um, his, his cape is not really done. So there were, were a couple iterations and we kind of talked about like what would make him feel better. Um, and we think the cape works pretty neat with this character. So this is like version B. Um, yeah, then, so this guy's Mayo. He is he only set, talks two words at a time, and one of the words is always starts with the sentence always starts with the word Mayo. Um, <laughs> yeah, that's kind of inspired by our pinball machine. We have a the very first pinball machine that had sound. It's called Gorgar, and it says Gorgar, <laughs> and it it only every sentence it says starts with Gorgar, and then one other word so gorgar mad gorgar blah gorgar whatever <laughs> at the time it was like a big deal but now that you know it's 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 it, it came out the year i was born so it's 43 years old and the machine feels so stupid now but i kind of love that so yeah that's where that came from so he's inspired by gorgar yeah um i like that machine yeah so what i normally do at this phase is I never make the clothing and say, oh, that's good because um, we're a small team and I'm just depending on Marvelous to sim it, meaning if it doesn't sim well, I'm going to change the way it's made and I'm going to change the design until it actually sims fine. Um, we're never going to make something and try to force it to work uh, because that just makes everything really difficult. So at this phase, what I'll do, um, and the character is not rigged yet, um, Caught right now is being rigged. Um, Mayo is the second character, and um, this is where he's at right now. Now, as far as like what I do to start testing the clothing works, is I just use Mixmo. Mixmo is free, um, and it's, it's a just, website. Yeah, it's a website. It is Adobe now owns it, and I'm just going to upload the character. And let me just find where I exported him. And again, it's it's not a great mesh by any means, but it will be okay. So I have the OBJ, and the OBJ is just um, all the parts combined with with bad topology and everything. But it yeah, should and be that's okay. fine. It's just for us to visualize. Yeah, yeah, it's just to test if the clothing design works. And there will be it never works the first time. <laughs> because there's always some kind of issue. So we just wait to finish uploading. And then once we do that, um, I'll export this. Okay, so this is their auto rigger. Um, there's some changes I did do for him it here. Right there. If, you've been, if you've been following, um, his body was originally round. I gave him a waist. The reason why I gave him a waist was because the pants were just going to keep falling down. And it was just, just going to be a pain. Um, that way, hopefully the pants don't fall down. They still might fall down. Uh, someone just asked you, did you use references for creating the cloth patterns in Marvelous Designer? Uh, not really. Um, Tran is, is, she thinks in terms of clothing patterns at this point, she could, she could come up with it. 
out of well, her head. Well, it's not so hard. Like you just know like what a basic shirt looks like and basic pants. And I don't use a pattern because their proportions and their body are, are nothing like um, regular people. So I just go from there, just, just with that. But I don't think there's any pattern that I could have that was going to work. Because it's so weird. It's how, weird. Plus, how his, great he's looking. plus his clothes are, you know, Miguel wanted MC Hammer pants. Yeah, he's got, <laughs> he has to have Z Cavaricis. He's got really low crotch and he's got like a skirt. I'm not sure how this is going to sim. I, I have a feeling he's going to have problems. Let's come back here. Um, you can see it's auto rigging. Once the clothing is all good, um, then I'll retopologize the character and then um, we'll send it to rigging and then I'll texture it and then we'll get hair and all that stuff on it. This is like the, I think the only character that actually has hair. <laughs> Just give it a second. Nader. Hey, hey. Hello. So just so those that don't know, know what's going on here, he's not just spinning. He is, um, mm -hmm. it's calculating the rig right now. So it's basically like an auto rigger that you could then apply motion capture to uh, from this vast library that they have. A lot of the library stuff is very like generic type movements, like jumping, running, but it's it's great for this uh, for this use here. Do you use Yeti or X Gen for the hair? We use X Gen. X Gen. Oh yeah, that looks great. Okay, so here he is here, and um, one of the ones we've been using is run and a jump, but let's just look for run. Have we tried using? Uh, AccuRig, not yet, but um, uh, the problem with, with, with AccuRig is I'm sure it's awesome if you're a rigger. The thing is, if something doesn't work, like I would not know how to fix it. So we just rather hire a rigger to just do it. Yeah, it's just the troubleshoot, all that stuff. Yeah. Um, I'm just seeing if his hands have any problem because if anything's interpenetrating, the clothing will not we'll just have issues anyway. So I just have it turned on in place and I'm just scrubbing through. That way we don't have inner penetration. This looks fine. We don't outsource a lot of stuff, Jose. Um, the only thing we do outsource is rigging, um, really, and then animation. We, we, we hire animators whenever it's something we can't do with mocap. Um, here's a comment here. Yeah, I'm sure. I mean, Houdini could do. Houdini could re reply to your emails, but we just don't know it. So, yeah, we just are yeah. not specialized in that. So we're yeah. just trying to get it done as simple as possible. Um, I mean, one of the things in Marvel is it it has less control, but when you just hit the button, it just works, and there's no fiddling, and it usually looks pretty good. But the biggest um, thing is we just we just don't know Houdini. Yeah, so. that is the big thing, and that's a whole learning curve. I'm yeah. just checking his legs. For us, that's like someone telling us that we would get to work faster if we bought a Ferrari. Yeah, we know that. But <laughs> that's nice, but we can't afford it. Can't afford it. Yeah. yeah. Um, this looks good, right? So I'm just going to download that, and it will be an FBX. We'll do 24 frames per second. And that will take a second to download. We know we, we, we need to learn Houdini. The thing is, the. I mean, look, like. Um, we, if we, if, if we wanted to focus on being VFX artists, we would see, we would be doing it. But uh, yeah, I do have a Houdini icon because I'm trying to um, get into it. But the other thing is just, just so you understand our background, our background was, it's just working in Maya because we're film industry people. And then learning Unreal was like a curve, right? Um, and I'm still learning Unreal. So there's only so much that my brain can handle. There's other things that I'd want to learn too, like Blender, because um, Blender looks pretty awesome. But, you know, we're just limited on time. And ultimately, our goal is not really to be like 
technicians or to know how to do everything. Um, our goal is really just to try to tell a story and, and make sure things, you know, look all right and stuff. Yeah. So, okay. So I'm in Maya here and I download the FBX. I'll just drop it in. People who teach Unreal don't know the engine fully. I don't think anyone knows think anything, anyone fully. Knows anything, <laughs> fully. <laughs> anything fully. Um, I, you know, I know a specific software as well because, because they're very specialized and, and more limited. Okay. So here we have this and this frame range was 24 frames. I'm just going to grab them here. Oh, what's default. Do you want to ex extend like his run? No, I mean, I only have 24 frames, Okay, but that's enough to actually just test okay. how the class will work. Right. Yeah. Um, so I'm just going to grab this and now I'm just going to export it as an Alembic cache. And we'll do zero to 24. If, if we, uh, if we could, uh, obviously if we knew Houdini, we would be doing everything in Houdini. I, I, it's one of those things that we know it's the, we know Maya has been left behind in the dust, but yes. If it, I know. think it's actually very important to learn it, yeah. but brain capacity and where do I want to spend my time? Yeah. Yeah. So let's export this as an Alembic. Okay. All right. Now that I have that, um, there's a couple things here. So this guy. as he is right now is just uh, is in this pose. So I need him to transition into this pose. I'm just going to grab. So I can't, I have him in this T pose and the clothing is built in this T, T pose. Um, and I want him to morph into this pose. So there's a couple of things I need to do. I'm just going to grab the body and I'm going to export this uh, frame at frame zero, which not, is not the his first gear. No, I just need him to move into that pose. Oh. Um, and I need to make sure the, the vert order doesn't get lost. So I don't want to do multiple things. And I'll just call this Mayo fast run pose. Zero, zero. And then um, I'm going to open up this mail file, which just has him in this T pose. And I'm going to export that. And I'll just say mail. It's not an A, it's not a T pose, it's A pose. Okay. And then what I'll do here is I'll swap this out. So I'm just going to import an OBJ. And the A pose should just replace, and it won't have the hair, but it will replace this mesh. Okay. And that's fine because now I'm going to import um, frame zero, zero fast run. This one here. And you, it does have to be the first frame. And I'm going to import it under low type or object type. It will be morph target, which is just a blend shape. And then you can set how many frames you want to morph over. So I put 99 frames. That's just so it has a long time to adjust. Yes, because if it's too short. The yeah. cloth will just go crazy. Yeah, it will snap back. And you can see, like, look at the fingers. They're getting deformed. Um, it's just finding the quickest way to get there. Let's see. Um, hope you're doing well, guys. Well, I hope you're doing well, too. Uh, we're doing good. And I noticed that Marvis gets confused to try creating an avatar from a model created in, in A pose. It wants a T pose. Yeah, I never use that. Um, Marvos has some like 
things that you can turn on that gets like auto auto fits things oh and stuff i uh, i just don't care i completely ignore that okay so now it's in here and it stopped but i'm going to let it continue simming because you can see there's a snapback from the momentum and it, you want it just to rest to make everything sh make sure everything's just relaxed before we actually bring in the animation and, and check to see if there's any problems here, because if we start with problems, it's gonna have problems. Now I am expecting some problems with the skirt. Um, I also expecting his pants might fall down. <laughs> so I'm not sure. Okay, I think it's relaxed enough. Now at this phase, I could um, just leave it like this. Sometimes what I'll do is I'll just ready it right um i also have my density and i am paying attention to this so it's my density is um which is basically the geometry count right now is at eight particle distance which is the lowest i really go um i could go higher but i you know i want the cloth to have more detail so the higher that number is the um, the geometry will be different. I also should actually take this guy, which is my temporary cape, because right now it's at 20. So you can see the geometry is, um, it's not as dense, but I, I want to see what it looks like at the density that I want it to be. So I'm going to set it to eight. And anytime you do that, you just want to sim it. So you can see it's kind of getting into position. And let's turn this off. Okay. Now I'm going to import the Alembic, which would just replace this. And the Alembic will have the hair and everything. Um, 24 frames. Okay. So here he is here. And I'll jump over to animation. And um, you have simulation quality. I am using an older version because it's more stable. Um, I have not emailed them about, there's some issues with the latest version, um, but I haven't emailed them yet. But I usually always go with stable. The newer version, there's nice things about it. It just has a, a, a pretty bad bug. Um, and then I'll just hit the record button, which shouldn't take that long because it's only 24 frames. And I'll just watch it. Normally at this time, I, I don't know, check, check my email. There's already some, some errors here. So like when I'm looking for a simulation, it's kind of something more extreme, like um, where, okay, there's a lot of problems here. It's from the skirt. Where there's a lot of change from one frame to the other. You already knew those, those problems were going to come with that skirt. Yeah, I already knew. Now, if we knew Houdini, maybe maybe you don't have these problems, but it's fine. We'll just adjust our design. Always make compromises. Uh, work within our limitations. Yeah, that skirt has problems. <laughs> but we'll, we'll get closer to it. It's almost done. Should be done. Um, I can play it. Let's change this to real time. And we can turn on loop and just see what it looks like. Uh, I like the cape. Yeah, the cape is awesome. Yeah. He He's definitely definitely doesn't feel um caught caught has the same animation. And he they feel completely different. Yeah, he feels like he's moving faster. Caught feels like he doesn't get anywhere. So like if I jump over to Caught here, um, this doesn't have Path Tracer on. It's a completely different feel. Yeah, he feels like he's his, his head is really <laughs> huge. So he feels like he doesn't get anywhere. Um, whereas Mayo feels like he's getting 
you know, a lot more distance. Yeah, it's funny. Um, and then let's... I wonder if the cape is adding to that also. Maybe, but I, I think it's cool. I love it. Yeah, I don't, I don't see the skirt working out. And it looks like that skirt is exploding through here. There's, what would I do to fix this? Um, I can change the cloth type. I put silk on it, which looks Maybe nice. Maybe too bouncy. Well, silk is like, it's very thin and it crumples really easily. So you can see it's crumpling and it's popping through a bunch of stuff. Um, there's a weird thing here on the wrist. So I'm not sure why it did that, but you can see it's crumpling here um, on that frame. And then there's some issues here too. So these are a double-sided cloth. So it's having some weird things. It, I wouldn't expect that. Um, here, it looks like it's pulling. So there could be some collision. Uh, that's causing some issues here. So his hand briefly brushes over this. And this happens. This happened in Voice of Hollow too. Um, sometimes it will adjust the animation or we'll just, I'll just shot model. It just depends. But now I can come back here, uh, go back to simulation and I can try out a couple of things. I can come over to these pieces, which are the pieces that are having problems, and I can give it um, a different cloth quality. One thing that I used a lot on Voice of Hollow was a preset of um, cotton sateen, which is this one here. It's still pretty soft. We can just apply, I'll just hit this arrow and just let it sim. And you can see it's it's trying to work that out. And then that might work out nicer. Uh, this one here, I'm not sure what's going on. Um, it has a denim preset. Maybe it doesn't like that. So I'll just come over to these ones and change that to also sateen. And maybe that will work out better. Uh, if I select a cloth preset, all the ones that are highlighted orange are... Um, telling me which cloth is signed to what. So I don't want to have a bunch of crazy colors. So I just want to see what it looks like. And then I can just run the sim again. But I think the chances of that skirt working out are not very high. And I can just also, again, just re-record re it. Um, I, I feel like it doesn't work, but, you know, you, you always just hope. This is already working out better. So the icon is really tiny, but usually if I see black, uh, I'm seeing the back face and that means something's exploding. Um, there's probably gonna still be issues because his fist is getting into the clothing that is pulling it. But that's not, um, to me, a cloth problem. That's just an animation problem. So I can go back into Mixamo and do a couple things. So here, there's always an arm space. Usually there's some kind of arm space. So I could spread out his arms more like this. <laughs> and I could just re-download this. I'll just do that. I didn't expect um, the clothing to get caught. Hey, hey. Let's come back here. Okay, so his knee explode through there but this why, is why would that happen why would it go through the knee it just is moving too quick it's like the sub samples yeah um here this is happening because his legs are crashing to each other and again that's his hand just hooking onto the clothing the other thing is you know that when i'm looking at this i know that if his arms weren't doing this, this wouldn't be a problem. But I also think like, how much do we want to end up having to adjust the animation? Like the 
it just becomes more work. Um, so it makes me think like, you know, how to just make the clothing the easiest possible. Can't, can't the, that skirt effect be made with just the pants without it being a skirt? With just the pants? Yeah, like make it more Z Cavaricci looking. What is Z Cavaricci? What is like that? MC Hammer pants. Uh, well, I mean, how is that actually sewn on? You know, it's not, it's the fact that it's crunch pleated. Like it, it's the material, it's like so much cloth. Yeah. Right. In order to have like these pleats, I need to sew another piece underneath. And that's what, why it has so many problems. Yes. If this was just like a, a flappy thingy. It wouldn't be a problem. No, it would, it would be fine. But it's this um, kind of accordion. Does it need, does it need more resolution? No, that makes it worse. One thing I could do here is just go into the quality settings here. Um, and this is where the newer version is better. And I can increase the number of simulations. So I can say, let's try eight. Um, in the newer version, this is more stable. But we can, we can just see. And I, I do need to write an email. So the problem with the latest version is that it has this bug where after it sims, it like shifts, like it like pixel. snaps, yeah. and then it it shifts the whole thing over. We're gonna have them on the stream in the next few weeks. Yeah, I have to, but I haven't had time. Um, there's a lot of time doing all these all these little things. Um, and again, I just want we just want things to be as simple as possible. Otherwise, I can just see us fiddling with this type of stuff. And you, you really don't want to fiddle. You just want to push it through like a factory, like assembly. Right, that, this already looks better. I remember early versions of um, Marvelous. We've been using Marvelous for a while. It would take forever to, to do a cloth simulation. And now it's actually gotten so much faster. Here, I think there's less problems. Yeah, look how that doesn't explode through the knee anymore. But I'm still having issues here um, with these little things, and that's because they're double-sided. So I can still... Did I fix it? Yeah, increasing the simulation. So let's just play. And the buttons are really stable now when it sims. The buttons used to like spin inside the <laughs> clothing. Um, it's gotten really good. Oh, this is interesting. Um, let's see, it's a couple of questions. If skirt will be simulated after pants other parts, will this work? No, uh, it could it could work, but I think that it would take longer. So I just want to have simple steps because basically I'm the only person that's going to do this. And if our short, our short's gonna be a longer than five minutes. And um, it would just take so long for one person to do all this. Um, there's only Miguel and I, and this is my task, and Miguel has his task. <laughs> so we, we don't wanna have more steps. So the less steps we can do things, the faster we can get it done. I've been doing classroom and Blender for the past three days, trying to fix the same type of issues. That's interesting. Um, so this looks much better, but I still think. Play it again. I was looking at something else. There's, okay. Oh, that's weird. Yeah. It like fell out. He fell. This is really weird. Is it because the, it's not because the pose changed at frame one? I don't know what happened here, but it's fine. For a lot of it and then it hit a pose this is a bug it has to be so it's like this type of stuff um i think what this is in in my opinion is when you increase when you change the settings you it just it doesn't like it so the default number of simulation there's two, there's a couple of settings. There's normal, which is what you use to make the clothing. And then there's animation, which is what you should use when you're simming. And then you have number of simulations, which is the quality, which is default five. 
the moment I increase it, it will work better. So I'm going to assume that if I watch this very carefully, and let's say I sim this, I'm not going to see the collision. And then what's happening is after it sims, it pops. So there's the, there's just stuff like this. Um, reboot? No, I already tried that. <laughs> But I think I know what this bug is. So we're not seeing it right now, right? It's it's on the way back there. No, it looks fine. Yeah, it looks fine. So let's just wait. It's almost done. But this is like um a, a really bad bug because it doesn't it's not that their software doesn't work, it's clearly working. Let's see if it pops. If you left the frame. Yeah, see? What the fuck? That's so weird. Yeah. So, you know, this is in all their versions. And this is when you, again, change the setting. So, you know, I can write write to them. I don't know how, you know, if it's going to be fixed. So I have a couple, I can do two things. I can, I, these are my options, write to them, wait for them to fix it, which you don't know if that's going to happen or when that's going to happen. Or two, just rework the design so that it just works at, it can sim at default settings. Um, and my choice would be to just rework the design. <laughs> But, but but that's a sleeve. I mean, that's not that your design there is not that crazy. So why would it? Well, it's because I increase the quality of my simulation. If I do this at, I bet if I go back to default settings, it won't pop. So let's do the same thing. Let's start from here. Um, and now I'm at default setting. I'm not messing with any of this, right? And it should sim faster because the, the number of steps increases the time. But you know, this is not uncommon to run into things like this. Like basically, you know, that's the whole entire process <laughs> of doing anything. Um, and every every software has a thing. There's always something. Nothing is perfect. Now we can see the problems. I don't, I think we can, I can fix these ankle things. So everywhere I'm seeing dark is a, is a clothing coming through. I'm not worried about that. But here, see, there's no pop. You see what I mean? Mm -hmm. But the prop, the problem is that the skirt breaks. Yeah. Now, what I can do here, I can just come back here, go back to simulation, and let's say I really want to try to make this work. Um, I can put lambskin on it. The more firm, lambskin is, you know, like a leather. Um, it's going to be more firm than cotton. But I'm not sure how it's going to look. It actually looks okay. It might look pretty cool, actually. So now I've changed that setting, and then I can come over here. Um, the way I would deal with this is I can, well, I've done a couple things. Um, so this out, is the outside layer, and then I have an inside. So these four that I'm highlighting are outside. They're a little bit bigger. They might be too big. Um, so I can resize them. To be a little bit smaller. So they are 105 per, were 110 percent bigger. Um, these were 100 percent, so 10 percent larger. So now they're just five percent. And then I can also give more air between them. Um, air is literally like inflating them like a balloon. Um, and you can change that in the pressure. 
So I can try changing this to like uh, 25, which is more than doubling it. And I can do the same thing with the sleeves here. So I can come back here. So these little strips right here are the, the sleeves. This is 7% larger, which I think it's fine. And I can look at the air and maybe let's try 45. And they might have less collision. Um, let's just sim it like this. So it can adjust to the changes. And like really the air pressure here doesn't look any different. So maybe I'll just inflate it even more. So let's do 40. And I'm still not seeing a lot. Okay, but it might make a difference. Let's just turn that off, go back to animation. And I can try simming it again and just watch it from here. But this, you know, all this is what I spend my day doing. Let's see, uh, Blender is perfect. I'm sure Blender looks really kick ass. Um, and then there's a comment here. It's a nice comment. Yeah, super nice. Evo Garcia. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Okay, so let's look at the skirt. It's not, I'm not seeing the back face, so I'm not seeing um, dark the geometry. Penetration. Yeah. Um, there's less inner penetration here on the legs here, but it still has some. And I can, I can just change that to leather and see what it does. Okay. Um, but let's play it back. Let's just see how the animation feels. Zoom into the skirt. It's better. I don't know if that looks good, though. You know, I mean, does that look nice? It doesn't bother me. Does it bother you? Oh, there's still some. Well, that's a hand. Oh, I see. So, so you can see the spikes. Yeah. Um, at this point, I'd probably, okay, so there's this. There's something like, okay, this is frame zero. And when it hits the first frame, this is really common where it just doesn't know, it doesn't have the momentum. So it's starting um, from zero, frame zero is my first frame. And then frame one is my second frame. It always has this, right? Like it, it's going from stationary and then to movement and it just has inner penetration. So I usually expect it on the second frame. I'm always gonna have something. Um, so what we, what we try to do is like buffer our animation, right? Like we don't go, you know, I always like to have a couple extra frames uh, because of stuff like this. This way I can strip the first two frames of the shot. And then if I come back here, I can see, you, you know, there's some issues, but it's not like the, the first frame. And again, here I'm also having issues <coughs> here. And again, that has to do with, the fact that they're double-sided, it's not very good at that. Um, all this is fixed when we increase the stuff. Other problems here is that wrist. Ah, that's not surprising. So the button. Yeah, the button is colliding into it. So there's all these things. Again, um, I don't know. You know, we want to have certain looks. As far as how I could fix this. Um, there's a, like, if I really like to say, if this constantly happens in all the shots, then we want to adjust, um, design. the design. But if it's like once in a while thing, what we'll do is just bring it to shot modeling. So what that would mean is I'll probably, I would export this as a limit and, and bring it into something like mush 3d, um, which we can, I can just show. But I, you don't want to do this all the time because you'll never be able to finish the project with just, I mean, if there was like a team of people, then you could do this. And this is actually done quite a bit. Let's just export this as an Alembic. Um, 
Okay. 24 frames. Looks 100%. Looks fine. And I can load mush. And um, import the lumbic. Um, and then try to figure out where it's sitting. Uh, that's the wrong Alembic. Let's do new scene. And again, this is just part of the process. But hopefully you can see why I just want fewer steps. Okay, so here's this. It has some... Um, Funny artifacts, that's because it's triangulated. I can see the animation. Right, so we can see where it's exploding. It's fine. Let's find a section. So you just exported the cloth out as an alembic out of Marvelous. Yeah. It doesn't look so bad. Like, did I export the right Alembic? Like, look at the button, the sleeve. That looks fine. Uh, I actually also can't see the back face, but it's it's here. Oh, I won't show them to you in, in Mush, huh? Yeah. So the back, that's the problem. I actually can't see the explosions. Um, I know that you can turn on back face. There we are. So now I can see all the red areas in the inner penetration. I think the reason why I'm not seeing the explosions are that. So here are some, some of the spiking here. And then what I'll do, um, I'll open the shape window. And I'll usually grab, in this case, let's say frame one. Let's make sure or frame zero, in this case. I'll export. Greetings from Poland. Let's come in here. Good artists in Poland. I'm going to bring in that Alembic. There are, I don't know, a lot of workarounds. So I have this here. It's all combined into one mesh. And it has the animation. And then what I'll do is just do frame zero where this is frame one, where everything looks fine. I'll just delete the history and I'll export this as an OBJ. Okay. And let me just find that. So now I have this OBJ, which is one single frame, and I'm going to try to bring it into my shape browser. Bitch. I'm trying to dig up one second. Good to see you back, Miguel and Tran. Hope you had a good trip. It was amazing. It's good to go back to the motherland. It was cool. I think I found where I put the drops in. I'm not sure. Um, let's close this. We went to Cartagena in Colombia. Okay. Okay. For, for the 
Sichu uh, Film Festival. Yeah, so um, Voice and Hollow was accepted into the festival. The Cartagena Festival was pretty, it's like, it's a very prestigious festival in Colombia. So it's the, old, it's the most prestigious festival in Latin America. It's the oldest. It's like 80 or, or something years old. Yeah. Um, so we went there to promote it. Okay. So here I have my frame one, which is just an OBJ. And then what I can do here um, under the sculpt, I can create a new layer, which is right here. And I can use the clone brush. which I forgot how to resize the brush. I saw the theater, it looked awesome. We actually played in multiple theaters. Uh, we played indoors and outdoors. The outdoor one in particular was, was fantastic and the crowd really responded great to the film. It was really cool. Yeah. Okay, so here, if you take a look at this area that has problem, and you can see how in this frame, it doesn't have a problem. Um, and I'm using a clone brush and you can see the red, where's the issue? If I have this active, what it will do is it will clone the details here from this one. And you can see how quickly that just fixes um, a lot of issues. Any, any kind of spike. So I had to do this um, on certain shots that had problems in the voice in the hollow. You can see all the red, which is the inner penetration going away. But I didn't have to do this a lot. Um, you don't want to do this all the time. It's still a lot of work. It's a lot of work, even with the newer tools. Um, but you can see how that fixes that. Now the problem is like, that's just fixing one frame. Right? But, you know, that's one frame. <laughs> if I go to the next frame after, it's like that. And that's why it's, it's, it's just a lot of work. And you can see that there's, there's other problems here. So um, I really want to avoid this. Do we use quad remesher? I still use quad remesher. Yeah, we use it for like props and stuff. But anyway, this is, this is it here. I am probably going to keep trying to mess with the design because I don't like a design enough to torture myself with this process and try to fix all this stuff. Um, you know, do we have to have the accordion skirt? I mean, it would be cool, but what do you think, Miguel? I don't think the skirt, for one, I don't think the skirt should go all the way around. I, I just think I see it more like an apron. Well, it doesn't. You can see it's actually, it doesn't go around. Well, it, it's, there's definitely something in the back. Sure, I can get rid of that. But you especially don't need it anymore with this with the with the cape. With the cape, yeah. Um, but we still have the problem with this front piece. Like, does it need to be an accordion? You know. Um, if we were a huge production, let's just hide this. You can say that's what the client can say, or we could say, look, that's what we want and figure it out. And figure we have to figure out. And that's where things get more expensive. And that's why things get expensive and that's why you need a bigger team um, because then it's passed on to someone else. Then they would go, well, Marvis doesn't work. So we'll do it in Houdini or whatever. Or they'll just say, you have a huge modeling team, just shop model all of it. <laughs> and they do do that because um, you can have like 20 people on the team or something dealing with that type of stuff. So that's, that's what I have for this guy. Um, I think just get rid of that yeah and just rework the pants how could we get the pants to have that kind of feel can you can you hide that let's just take a look let's hide this I mean his crotch is really low yeah it might not even need anything well what if we just delete these and let's just sim it it might look funnier that you can actually see the crotch instead of it being covered. Let's see. So we can come back here. I 
I mean, we wanted the skirt, but we didn't have the cape in mind. So maybe the cape kind of does, does it for us. But you can see there's less problems already. <laughs> He's so funny looking. Yeah. Caught was a pain because he's got a lot of layers. So he took a long time. Um, because the more you layer it up, the more you're gonna have inner penetration. And, you know, if we come over here, we just, you know, can turn- all layers. Yeah, let's turn on path tracing so you can see his clothing. He's got a dress, he's got a coat, and his neck has like layers and layers of cloth. Um, and then he has this kind of, v-shape shoulder pad thingies he yeah he took a long time to make it work um it's not that it wasn't trying to design it or figure out how to make it marvelous but it was multiple iterations to make sure that it could sim that that's what took so long and he went through a lot of sim simulation i should not leave this like that because my computer will crash let's turn off path tracer and let's take a look at this. I mean, you know, are his pants, cr pants crotch low enough or? Let, let me see, like. Um... They're pretty low. If they go any lower, it. They, they introduce other problems. I'm just looking at like MC Hammer type pants. Pull them up. Show, like, show him. Uh, let me see. Let's see. Uh, Bobby said, I would have sent you my MC <laughs> It's on the occasion. Like, take a look at these here. Oh, they're like, there's like a, a straight gap. Do you see what I mean? Like, maybe uh, that's going to get the same effect. Okay. So we can try that. Like, it looks... Uh, when they spread the legs, I can see the shape of the pants are not like that. There's like that's a, it. there's like a big diaper thing. Yeah, <laughs> right I think there. I think that's what it needs. Let's see, take a look here. Uh, there's a big oh straight line in between the legs. Yeah. There. Yeah. Okay. So in that case, I would go back. Let's just not save this. I right, said, so take over the screen again. Uh, can you? Can you do that? There. Cool ref with the hair and pants. For sure. Okay, so in that case, let's just kill these guys. Hey, when was the last time someone was looking at MC Hammer pants for reference? Um, yeah. And if we take a look here, these points right here are the crotch points. Um, that's the ankle part. So I would adjust this. Let's just add a point here and get this to be really straight like this and maybe make the, the legs much thinner. Um, and we'll, I'll sim that in a second. You can see when I'm adjusting it, it's having inner penetration. Let's add a point here too. Let's pull this down like that, and it's sim. And now he's got the <laughs> these little gaps. Um, how do you emphasize this more? I think it looks pretty funny. I think it's hanging down right now. Can you see that, Miguel? Yeah. So that's kind of weird. Uh, let's pull these points up. so that we don't have that. Okay, so they're not, they're a little bit straighter. 
That's definitely better. And I think maybe if you want to, if I want to emphasize this more, it's narrowing the legs more. So now the leg trousers are thinner, and now we can see that funny, that shape. What do you think? Do you think that we could get, like, take a look at this here, like these vertical wrinkles here? Yes. Um, that's pretty easy. What I would do here is hide hide these guys. I'll disable them, deactivate. That'll give that, that pleated look that you had before. Yeah. So what I would do is I would cut off ban. So I'm going to create an internal line. Um, let's say it's like this here. And I'll cut and sew, so it separates the piece. So now we have a waistband that stays really tiny, which are these parts right here, and that's mirrored over here. And then what we can do is make the waist much larger. I'll give it that tension. Yeah. Well, it will just, yeah, it will give it that tension. Bunch up. Now, it could change a lot of other stuff that I don't want. Um, it's not bunching up as much. I also don't know where the Bezier handle is on this. So something is missing. Okay. Let's do that. The back doesn't need it as much. No, you're not you're never gonna see that. So I can try cheating a couple of things. I can make the waist tighter. And I only have to adjust one side because uh, it's all mirrored. There, we're getting something here. Now it's getting baggier here, which is, I don't really like that. So I'm getting all this air. They say that they're real air breathers. <laughs> well, I'm sure it's like, I don't know if that's comfortable. <laughs> um, I mean, that doesn't look, well, now it's coming out like this <laughs> on the side. Uh, so how could I remove that? So technically, that will remove some of the middle. So now here, you can see it's flatter because I removed some of the material here. Um, maybe do something like that. And then maybe the back just not need it as much. So let it be because he has to cape. So it's it's tighter here. Um, if that's tighter, it can hold the shape a little bit better from the front, I think. Like his pants are like rectangles now. Okay, so that's really pretty relaxed. And there's things I could do to remove even more cloth. Um, let me try this. So this is why I don't use patterns because it this would never work on a person. 
It just happens to work on this character. Well, I don't know what you think. It's definitely looking better. Is that, <laughs> it's really weird. Um, does that look right or does that look strange? Let's turn on. I think what it needs is, it needs to, to I, I like that it's square for sure, but I think it needs a little bit more of a taper to the square. So let me let me take over one more time here. Okay. You mean that curve on on the legs on the outside? Like that. On ours, it just kind of goes straight into it. Um. Yeah, because it does. All right, so I can. I mean, it literally does that because it's like a box. Yeah. So I can add more curves. Just curve out that shape. This tool is amazing. Like, they have to be teaching fashion students with this before they start cutting stuff up, right? Because. Well, there's Clo 3D, which is supposed to be for um, real fashion people like not CG artists. Okay, so that's not really curving. I think the other problem is that his legs are short. Sure. So you don't have too much to work with. But I think you could push that curve like even lower down. Like I, I it'll look funnier. Okay. lower do you do you just get a feel someone just asked you a question do you just get a feel of how the changes you do affect after spending a lot of time with cloth yes she she if you were to give trans scissors in cloth she'd be able to figure this crap out already no I, yeah you would you did it on the ningyo yeah but i don't like have real sewing skills um but we we had clothing like for real actors. You so, altered it all. Yeah, I had to alter it, but I was like suffering the whole time. So there's that curve. Yeah, that's better. I think that looks pretty good. Can you put the, sh the shirt back on? I mean, those are really funny pants, okay. So let's just select everything I want to display. We're bringing MC Hammer pants back, everybody. Show pattern, and then we'll activate it and sim it. How does that look? That looks kick ass. It doesn't really have the crinkles that you want up here, though. Um, yeah. I don't know. What do you think? Does it need more crinkles? I mean, it's kind of just sagging like this instead of going down. Uh, let's take a look at the real ones. But we can also add like tassels or whatever. These guys here? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, that's cool, but that, I don't know. I think it looks all right. Let me see. Let me see if this. Can we see him running just to get an idea? Yeah. Let me just save that. Give it belts or something. I'm like looking uh, at a bunch of images of MC Hammer pants. Okay, so let's see him running. Let me import. This one here, which is stripped out. And then we'll bring in the morph target. MC Hammer Pants have kind of been taken over by bohemian women. Oh, they kind of have, huh? Yeah. OK, so let's let it blend. I also want to do um, more interesting stuff with the cape. 
because this is just blocked in and it looks really flat. And then here, I also want to give this more air pressure. Let's let that sim. Let's turn that off. It takes a couple of clicks. Uh, let's bring in the OBJ now or the Alembic. Okay. And now we have the animation. And let's sim it. But this is the process. It looks like it's doing better. He does look like he's hauling ass. Yeah, he's much faster than caught, unless we change his design. But is that a bad thing? No. And it doesn't have as many problems. It's much less problematic. Um, these I'll try to figure out how to fix. It seems like it has problems in these pointy areas. Uh, I can figure that out. I think the way I would fix this here. I don't know. So are these pants good? Mm -hmm. That means we keep this and we strip the skirt. Yeah. Okay. As far as how I'll fix um, these areas. So it's, there's a lot of impenetration around here. What I would do is I'll just merge them um, these into one piece. So right now these are linked. So you can see like this green line, meaning it's linked to this one. Um, so what I'll do is I'll break the link, remove linked editing, and I'll remove linked editing, and I'll get rid of these. Okay, this is going to take a moment. Let's keep that one back here. And it would benefit me. These are independent pieces. So if I make a change here, it won't change this one, which is kind of annoying. So I'll delete one side and I'll do symmetric pattern with sewing. Now these are linked, but now they're over here. Now, if I sim this, I'm going to have all kinds of problems. So what I'll do is I'll just hide. I'll deactivate them and hide the outer layers. And then grab these and just place them underneath, which it still looks like it's going to have some problems. Um, but what I can do here is just place this over this. That way when it sims, it'll be better. And then what I want to do is just merge these into one piece. So if I select these two edges, I can right click and merge and it becomes one piece. And then that should remove that issue there. It, you lose some, some nice things, but I think that's okay. You could still put that little seam there or the illusion of it in the texture a tiny bit. Yes, but I can, I can also do a couple of things. I can, oh, so this lost the connection here when I did that. Okay, so I'll have to sew these. Let's do the same thing here. Let's merge this. And now these two are not sewn. So I can sew these. Um, I'll go MN sewing. 
Now let's just do keep it simple. This is where I get confused still, just spatially. We, we watch tutorials all the time. Yeah. We sometimes even watch our own videos to figure out how the hell we did something. Yeah, because we forget. We forgot. I think I sewn this correct. It's hard to tell. We'll figure out in a second. Okay, that's correct. So that's not so bad. You see, it's kind of cool because his outfit right now kind of looks like... He looks like a monk. Like a martial arts dude. Yeah, he does look like a martial arts dude. Right? He looks like a... Uh, it looks... One of those kung fu films. It does, huh? Yeah, he's... Uh, What's the dude from Kill Bill? Um, the guy with the mustache. I don't. Oh, I don't know his name. Pei Taipei or something. Let me see. Let's save this. Oh, yeah, you have to watch the tutorial. There's no way you could remember all that stuff. I think the the best skill that you or anybody can learn is how to learn. Yeah. It's just constantly being open to it. You guys know how much this industry is constantly changing. Um, it doesn't stand still. But if you think like, oh, I don't know all this, I suck. Like, oh, we don't know half half of the stuff. Well, if we stopped learning five years ago, we'd be incredibly behind. Um, yeah. Okay, so that's good. Let's reveal the cape. So you say that you don't like the cape. I don't like how it's not very pretty. Yeah, it just looks like a Halloween cape. Yeah, I don't think that I would change this flap back here that much, though. Um, I don't know what I would do. Like, what would, what would I add to this? What do you think? We can layer it. Okay, it's having some issues here. Yeah, it's very gently. I mean, do you have a problem with how simple just this flap is? No. I mean, it could be more pieces. If I make this double-sided, it's going to have inner penetration issues. Here, what I would probably do here, let me just save this. is I might layer this up with more pieces. Um, it could be more quilted that that could work. Mm -hmm. So what I could do here is maybe try to make a pattern. Let's say select that edge and I create internal lines. I can make multiple lines. Maybe it's too much. Say maybe something like that. Um, I could display that pattern. That was the back. So let's do this one. So maybe something like that. Or maybe they can be more square shape. So whatever I draw here could be some kind of pattern. Um, I don't really know how it's going to look. I'm just looking at it like this. I can get rid of I think it. the horizontal ones were looking cool, but they weren't simming. These ones right here? Yeah. You like that pattern? Yeah. Okay. Like in, the, in the original sketch we had, they, they, they had kind of horizontal lines. Well, they were more layered. Um, and layering is kind of an issue with simming, but we could quilt it, say something like that. These look close to touching. And then what you can do is um, select these pieces. We can layer cloned under, and those pieces will show up underneath. They're facing backwards. 
So I can flip the normals. And we can just give it air pressure. Let's try 30. Let's see how it behaves. Um, I like to turn off the lines at this point because I can't tell what it's looking like. Okay, so it looks like that. Now, the top pieces, I, a trick I usually do is make them a little bit larger. So I go into the weft and the warp. And I change the value from 100 to, say, like maybe 110. So these are 10% larger. And that usually produces more wrinkles. Yeah. Now, these have a particle distance of only 20. If I bring it to 8, that's going to increase the resolution. And you can see how we can see the quilting a little bit better. And then it could be, some, like say, something like that. That looks cool. I like the back more. Maybe the front doesn't have enough air. Um, let's change this to 45 from 30. So that's poofier. And now it's giving me some, some crinkles like that. And then this one, I, it's in my best interest to keep it flat because it flaps around so much. Yeah. And I could save this. Now, I probably would um, blend shape them back into a T-pose after this, because you do want everything in T-pose. And we can go back to the animation. And try simming that. Maya 2024 came out a couple of days ago. It introduced some great animation tools, especially the sculpting tools and the graph editor. Should work great with mocap. Also some nice fizz dev updates. Yeah, you know, it's funny, like, I don't even see, I don't even look at what the updates are anymore because they're so minimal. Um, there's no comment I could widen the bottom of the cape. Yeah, I, I think that might not be a bad idea. It, it might look nicer like this when he's running. Oh, you want to make sure the cape is not too long because then there's going to be problems he's going to step on it when he bends over or something. Okay, so that finished. What do you think? I definitely like that. Cuz it looks like a like a scarf but but not. It's cool. It doesn't make any sense. <laughs> um like can you imagine a real person wearing an outfit like this? Like a a like a regular realistic looking human? It would be really weird, no? Yeah, it's awesome. I, I would wear it. You would wear it? Yeah. Do you think the cape should be wider? Or is there something funny about it being smaller? There's something funny about it being like a rinky-dinky cape. It looks rinky-dink, right? Yeah. It does give comfy vibes. I agree with that. Totally. It looks comfortable. Yeah. Um, for the buttons, these are just temporary. I do see these guys having problems because they stick out so much. Uh, these are just default ones. The cape is a bit stiff. Shouldn't it fly a bit higher? I, I think that'll be on, a, on an animation basis on a shot by shot. Basis. Yeah, well, what we can do is um, we could give it a win. Give it some win. So hold on. Go to environment, show the wind controller. Here it is. Um, which in this version, whichever way the arrow points, or the the point, it doesn't matter where you put it. That's where the wind's going to blow. And we can just activate it. We'll have to resim it, which is fine. I see what it does. It might be too strong. Oh, okay. yeah. Let's see. Actually, and usually before something like this, if you, um, it's not good to start like that. Because the wind will start. The wind will, will pick up too slow, so you won't see it. Um, usually you want to just do it at this phase. And there are, you know, we can help it out doing something like that. But I can select on the cone 
and I can change the strength. Um, on voice and hollow, we really didn't do too much to it. I usually kept it pretty simple. Well, at the end, I think I, in the last sequence, it was like super windy. Maybe we can change the frequency or turbulence. So there's more bumps. There you are. Now it's pretty windy. Okay, so once it's like that, it can stop, go to animation, and set up here, and let's see how that looks. On some of the uh, shots, like where they're running, I do have the wind on. Um, not so that it looks like there's wind, but just so that they look like they're going faster. Like, I don't think it looks like um, wind is blowing other than that he's running so fast that the clothing's moving up. That's a snapback, which kind of sucks. That looks great. Yeah. So I, we got pretty far with this. Are you cool with the design? Mm -hmm. Are there things that you think should be changed? No, I think it looks cool. I do want to put those, make those buttons feel more like the Planet of the Apes symbols, but that's it. Yeah. Well, yeah, and I'll probably make that up. Um, you can make it in any program, and we can just import it in. It's just an OBJ. I think that's it. So that's Mayo. Yeah, let me show something else. Oh, look, I'm looking at myself on Facebook uh, doing this stream. Okay, let me show this. So this is some progress on this guy. So this is just conceptual texturing. The color is um, will be completely redone. But you can see what the moths are going to look like. Because the whole idea is it's these fabric characters. And the bad guys are the, the evil moths that want to eat them. That yeah, looks great. They're they're obviously very stylized moths. No moths look like this, <laughs> but uh, you know, this is. It looks awesome. Yeah, this artist is amazing. Yeah. Sedan Vague. So, pretty cool. Uh, and it doesn't even have um, like materials or anything yet. No, this is just rough, and these are these are the sculpts. Yeah, once this has like, last week. Once these have materials on them though, like with light is going through the wings. Um should look pretty nice. Yeah, I told them like make sure the the little tweeze what is this thing at the end called? The stinger. The stinger looks really phallic and it's like, oh damn, that's pretty intense. So um yeah, it looks great. So he's absolutely crushing it. And this is inspired by the death's head moths. So you can see how they do have like a skull in the back. So that was the idea with that. But obviously this is taken to a, an exaggerated level when you see that that's actually sculpted in. The actual moths are not sculpted in. It's just a textural thing. But they look like skulls. Um, so the moths are going to be at this... Um, mountain called death's head mountain which is you know big time inspired by like uh castle gray skull which you can see right here something oh i don't have i don't have that on so inspired by this right here which you can't see either so let's see right there <laughs> so anyway but that's all we got for this week, guys. Uh, so we're back, so we should be able to uh, move stuff a little bit quicker. We are going slower than we did on the Voice in the Hollow just because we can't work like that. 
we would literally just drop dead if we tried to work at that pace. So we had to slow things down. Yeah. Well, hopefully the ideas will will pick up the pace. Um, I mean, we're, it's you know, it's like you just get burnt out by yeah. doing doing so many hours. But we'll hopefully like kind of recover a little bit. Um, we also, when we started Voice in the Hollow, uh, we didn't stream some of the early stuff because we were working on it before we started the stream. Yeah. So. And we should have some. Oh, we we are going to be playing at the Florida Film Festival, April nineteenth. So I will be there. If anybody's in in Orlando, uh, so we'll be there, and then. Oh, one other festival, but I'm not allowed to say which one yet because they asked us not to. And then we should have some crazy news on the Voice in the Hollow that we can't talk about publicly yet, but it's as big as you think it is. It's pretty nutty. So we should have that yeah. Uh, soon, yeah. Um, and even though we're kind of moving a little bit slower, we're going to try to bring in more people so that we can still finish this. <laughs> um, yeah. Maybe getting more help this time around oh yeah let's take a look at that is that actually in there let's see um this is nice Can, from this is Devin Den Rush congrats on the success I don't see it, um, thing, but we should be here somewhere. Well, well, we won't go to all the festivals. I don't think we can do that, but it would be nice. Uh, Devin responded that we need matte painting. Well, oh, we there might, we are. We might call you out for that. <laughs> yeah, there we are. So, voice on the hollow. Um, cool. And, and thanks everyone who's been watching and commenting. You guys are really awesome. And it makes, it makes the stream a lot more fun for me too. So I appreciate all just your interaction. Yeah. I didn't even realize that this was already online. So pretty cool. Uh, and they're playing Fantastic Planet, which is pretty cool. Great soundtrack, Fantastic Planet. It's... Uh, it's got this really creepy vibe to it, yet it also sounds like a porno film. It's kind of, <laughs> it's like 70s porn. It's kind of interesting. Uh, yeah, so pretty cool. It looks like they have a inter very interesting lineup. Yeah, it's pretty cool. So uh, anyway. Thank you, everyone. You guys are awesome. Thank you so much. And yeah, you got to hype it up um all right so let me uh kick this off yeah if you guys want to follow our work we are at let me see where the hell this is at that's it right there and uh yes thank you guys so much and we'll talk to you soon bye everyone bye bye